Hello, hello, my Facebook Live friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com with your weekly Tuesday at two-ish. Oh, that wasn't what I meant to do. I'm trying to turn off my notifications on my watch. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. That way, if somebody calls or messages me right in the middle of this, it won't knock everything off. How is everybody today? Hope you're off to a good week. We've had a ton of rain here, which is always a good thing. Um, because it just tends to be dry. So everything is really, really just green and vibrant. We have uh, a number of dry creeks right around our property here. There's a lot of uh, dry creeks in t throughout the state, and um, they are rushing with water today from having so much rain. It was thundering and lightning last night. Um, we had a lightning strike really close to our house last night. Um, thankfully, it didn't hit us. Um, and our little doggy Roscoe was huddled under the bed, frightened and trying to um, stay safe. He just, he shakes like a leaf when it's storming. And even a lot of times um, when it's not thundering or anything, he, it's like he feels the barometric pressure change. Hey Marlene, I'm glad you're here. So I'm just kind of trying to make sure on my, on my um, let me pull my computer a little closer here so I can see. Um, comments and things, see who's going to join us today. I got a little bit of stamping with you to, uh, for you today. We're actually gonna do another technique today. Last week, I was doing the um, thumping technique, and I have another card today for you, not with a thumping technique. Today, we are going to, hey Eileen, today we're going to do the faux linen technique. Faux is an F-A-U-X as in false. So um, it's a fun technique and I'm still showcasing um, our retiring products. Um, I will tell you a little um, secret as it were, and that is that as much as I love the new catalog that's coming, hey Patsy, I always go kicking and screaming into new catalogs. Not because I don't love all the new things coming, but I'm like, I don't wanna let go of the things that are retiring quite yet. It, so I usually like squeeze every day of the retiring things. I squeeze them out all the way until they're no longer available. So um, that's just me. Um, it's kind of my emotional attachment to um, the uh, Stampin' Up, the, to my supplies and my favorite stamp sets and um, so yeah, I have all, well not all, but mostly retiring products in my project today. Hey Sue, I'm glad you're here as well. Let me grab my, okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll have just a couple of more minutes of hellos. I know I'm a little bit late today, but I, um, I wanted my helpers here. So she is busily working on swaps that are coming in. I'm hosting um, a survey, my my uh, internet went out for just about two seconds. Um, but thankfully, it didn't cut me out completely. So you may have a little blip on your on the feed. Um, but anyway, it is that time of year when we as demonstrators are um, swapping with each other, getting new ideas, and playing with new stamp sets and new products and new colors. And I'm gonna show you a little sneak peek today. Um, I won't do another sneak peek until probably later in the week. I will tell you, I did ask last week if I was going to do a second Facebook Live, if you would, and I was gonna do it on Thursday, would you be happier with it being at two o'clock or with it being in the evening? And I had a resounding um, response that two o'clock was good for you guys. So I think I'm gonna try doing that this week. Um, so I will announce it before I do it, but I think I can do it this week. Um, so that is my plan and I'm kind of strategizing because I'm gonna do something different on Tuesday at two, will remain, um, but I will add in Thursday at two and do something a little bit different. So those two um, kind of live events have to have a different component, at least in my view. So uh, I'm making plans, okay. So, welcome, welcome to everyone. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera down and let me get my, 
things positioned here so they're not too much of a distraction to you when we open up. Okay, here we go. Whoopsie. Sorry about that. Did I give it to you? Yeah, I gave you my ceiling. I was trying to do it really smooth and I gave you my ceiling. Okay, is that looking kind of dark? Maybe not. Let's see. No, actually looks pretty good. But I think I am going to bring you a little bit closer. Let's see if that doesn't help. So this, as you can see, is my sneak peek. That's where we're going later. So my sneak peek is to show you um, this really fun project that I'm doing with my team. And uh, my team meeting is next Tuesday. We always are the first Tuesday of each month. And uh, this, we always make uh, a project. Usually we make like four cards, something like that. This time we are actually doing this sweet little project. And it is in one of our little mini pizza boxes. So we have a belly band showing you the new end colors. And these are the new end colors right here. This is my first time to showcase them. And I don't even have all of the names down perfectly, but let me open this and show you how this works. So even though I don't remember all the names yet, there is Magenta Madness. And you can see the nice thing about this is I've got a little bit of the ribbon here. I've got one of the cute little, um, this is the new little dots that we have. This is the, cu the card stock. And then the, um, this is the designer paper. So there's the Magenta Madness. And there's the Just Jade. And then this is the Misty Moonlight. And this is the Bumblebee, which I can already tell you is probably gonna be my hands down favorite. I always love yellows. And this one's really, really pretty. Um, and, then, and then the other one, I love browns too. So this uh, Cinnamon Cider, I don't think we've ever had anything quite like this. Um, so I will probably, you know, I was just going to show you this, but I could, let me just grab a couple of pieces of cardstock to show you some differences here. Hang on one second. So that was kind of unplanned. So just to kind of show you, this is, um, Crush Curry, and this is Bumblebee. So Bumblebee is definitely um, a little bit softer. Their uh, Crush Curry is definitely brighter. So not a huge, huge difference. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Cynthia. Not a huge, huge difference, but that is kind of gives you the, the side by side, and I'll be doing some more of those as time goes on so you can kind of see the differences. And this is where Cinnamon Cider is just totally different. So here, is, here it is against Soft Suede. And Soft Suede is the only other medium brown we have. After this, it goes all the way to Early Espresso. So definitely has a more of an orangey brown. And of course, I love warm colors. So those are going to be my favorites. Um, this, this reminds me of blue jeans, um, kind of faded blue jeans is what that reminds me of. The, Misty Moonlight, Just Jade, really pretty green, definitely on the bluer side. And then Mist Magenta Madness, woo! It's like, man, that is a, what I would call a hot color. Very, very vibrant, very vibrant. Which to me, I tend to use these colors in small doses, but that's just kind of a, a personal preference there. So before I go on to what I'm gonna be stamping today with you and show you this cool technique, I did want to just mention to you, because this is just brand new, hot off the presses, Stampin' Up! is offering a promotion during June, as soon as the new uh, catalog goes live. So here it is, June the 3rd, the first day of the new catalog. And during this time, you can purchase the starter kit for $99. That's what the starter kit always is. And you, when you choose the starter kit, you choose $125 of whatever you want, and you only pay $99 plus tax, so you get free shipping. But there is another little additional thing, and that is you get to pick a free bundle. So a free bundle of your choice in the new catalog. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal promotion, 
And just a couple of things, and that is that, you know, when you purchase the starter kit, there's no obligation. So, you know, if you want to continue on um, after your first, uh, let's see, when you join in June, probably March, April, May, June, then you don't have to purchase anything else in order to stay active until the end of the summer. And if you don't stay active, there's no penalties. You just are no longer active, which means you can't get your discount. But this is a great way to get 20% off on everything that you purchase. You also get to be part of my Southern Sweet Stampers. We are a phenomenal group. I'm so proud of my team. I love them. We have a very active Facebook group and we do a lot of fun things together like making this next week and so those packets are going to be prepared and shipped out because right now we are still doing our team meetings via Zoom. Okay, so that is my little little sneak peek of the new in colors and this awesome new promotion. So now let's kind of switch gears and I want to show you a stamp set that's retiring that I really like and I think you should consider adding to your collection. Let it ride. Um, I can, I will tell you, I haven't ridden a horse in like 40 years. I loved horses when I was young. I have numerous friends that love horses. And I think horses are just one of those, you know, they, they can, you can make them look Western. You can make them look a little bit more regal. Um, great tree images here. You can do a lot with this. Not uh, most of what I have. Well, no, we're making a feminine card today, but these are more masculine. So just to kind of show you some of the things you can do with this. Uh, this is a, a technique that's done with the uh, Stamparatus to give the illusion of motion. I think one of the things I really love about this stamp set is the greetings. This is probably my favorite. Live as if someone left the gate open. Hey, Ada Kay, I'm glad you're here. So this is just a phenomenal stamp set. Um, it is a red rubber cling stamp. And um, this is another one that I had done. And this uses this, the technique that I'm going to show you today. But I'm going to show it to you in a little bit more of a feminine um, um, design. And um, you can see that when you do this faux linen technique, you see how it looks like linen. So I like this. And then on top of that, I ended up the linen effect... Well, I'll show you. I, I ended up adding some, hey, Mary, I'm glad you're here. I ended up adding some um, sponging, which gives it a, kind of an aged linen effect. So this is the one that I'm going to do with you today. And you can see how you can take this same image and just kind of pretty it up a little bit, make it a little bit more feminine. And so this is actually um, terracotta tile, one of our in colors that is staying around for another year. And... Um, and I chose a small greeting here, the go for it. You could choose something else, but look at these other greetings. Take life by the reins, let it ride. That's a great one. Um, but like I said, this is my favorite. Live as if someone left the gate open. That's a great one. And of course, there's a for you. I did a whole class with this, but can I find those cards? Not readily. Um, before I move on to show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate this card with you today. And I will show you that I did it two different ways. Here I did a lot of kind of blue sky background and on this one, I did not. So it's just two different looks in some ways. I kind of like it better without it because I think the blue honestly almost distracts a little bit and doesn't give you as clean a look as what I think it could be. Uh, I think it kind of detracts from the horse a little bit. So one other, uh, thing I'll show you with this um, technique. I had also done this card with the Beautiful Friendship stamp set. And so you can see how you get that kind of textured look that's almost like fabric. And that's what we're really going for. So let me show you how we are going to achieve that. So here is my project packet. And like I said, this is the terracotta tile. Um, this ribbon here, this terracotta tile ribbon is carrying over, so you can still get this, and it has that linen. So I thought this linen um, ribbon would go really well with my linen effect. Um, now, this is the designer paper. This is actually in our um, retiring um, 
on our last chance list and it's on sale, this whole package of paper. And I will say, I think this, although it wouldn't necessarily go with this particular design with the, with the um, horse, I think this kind of looks like a horse blanket. So um, anyway, we are going to stamp directly on that. But before we do that, we are going to do the technique. Now, for this technique, you need a piece of plain um, tissue paper. And this is just like what you wrap with. So I've just got a little square of this. When you do this, you want to make sure that you stamp on the side that's not shiny. This has like some kind of... Um, material on here that makes it slick and shiny and your um your technique will suffer if you use that side so let me get a few things out of the way here and what we're going to do is we are going to ink up the the horse and i'm using my memento ink pad because i'm actually going to use the blends and we are going to stamp directly on the tissue paper on the back side of the tissue paper. Hey, Adriana, I'm glad you're here. So there is my horse on the tissue paper. And I'm going to just grab a little something to wipe that off. don't want that leaking onto anything. So you can see I have this awesome mat that my assistant did for me. So this is some of our beautiful grid paper that we have. And she took it to the office supply store and had them um, coat it with, what do you call it, laminated. So now I can just wipe it off instead of having to get a new piece out every time, which is really awesome. Now, I'm going to use these colors here to color in my horse. And all I'm gonna do is outline a little bit. This is crumb cake and I'm using dark crumb cake here. And I'm just gonna outline him. And not getting too fussy with what I'm doing, but I am just going over the dark lines here. Now you could do your horse, you know, you could make a, a dappled gray horse, which is actually my favorite kind of horse. But I thought this, these browns looked really nice with the uh, terracotta tile. So I'm doing kind of, a, kind of a softer tan colored horse and color in his tail pretty good there. And then I'm gonna come and fill him in with the light crumb cake. And so I'm gonna use my brush tip and I'm just gonna color him in all the way. So this doesn't take very long at all. Now the one thing I meant to bring over here is, maybe I'll go get it real quick. I need something for his hooves to give them a little bit of definition. Um, let me give a little bit of ground. So to, I'm gonna use the brush tip. This is the light um, old olive. Now, you know, the, um, the blends have not retired even though they're in the last chance list, but the, single, um, the singles are retiring. So you can only get the lights and the darks, what's left uh, for just a few more days. Let me get a dark, this is dark smoky slate and I'm just gonna color in his hooves with that. It gives a little bit more. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, again, just kind of wipe that down to make sure I don't have anything on there. Now I am going to crumple this up really good. And you wanna really press in all of that, all of those little bits and pieces, okay? And then you want to just smooth it out but not so much. You don't wanna like iron it with your hands. So let me just do one more little bit, make sure it's really good and scrunched up. Okay, now let me grab my glue. I wasn't nearly as prepared as I thought I was. So I'm going to use my, um, 
This is my silicone mat or silicone sheet, I think it's called. And I have a gluey sponge here with a nice handle on it so that it doesn't get in my fingers. And once the glue dries on this, and I'll just show you, it's so easy to clean because you just do like this and all of that dried glue just comes off. So this is super easy to clean. You just need to let it dry in between and then you just throw that away. So you have all these glue goobers and um, we won't talk about what it looks like, but it's really unsightly and you just clear all that stuff off of there and that's it. And then it's ready. So, hey, Athena, I'm glad you're here. So let me get rid of the glue goober. So I don't really want that sticking on my project, although it comes right off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a little pool. I don't need a ton of this. This is the sometimes called the green glue, the liquid glue. And what I'm going to do is kind of paint. I might need more than that. Actually, I think I need a little bit more. Where did I put it? Here we go. I think I need a little bit more because this is a fairly large piece. This is one of the stitched rectangles. You don't have to do the stitched. You can just do a regular, you know, um, you can just cut your cardstock. It just gives a little bit of a nice stitching line on there. And I'm just going to lightly coat this, especially on the edges, with a really thin layer of liquid glue. Now, make sure I got it in the corners. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to take my tissue paper and lay it right on the top. I wanna to make sure that my horse is completely on there. And now I am going to just press, press all the way around like so. And now, I have my piece that has that linen look. Now, I haven't added any ink to it, and you can just do it like that. When I've done this in the past, I've just done it this way, and it is a cool look. So what you do next is you trim. Like I said, I'm not nearly as prepared as I should be. I need my long-handled scissors. Let's see. Um, thank you, that's exactly what I need. So I'm just using something with a long blade on it is easier and just turn it over to the back side. And then all I'm doing is cutting off the excess. So it's just a straight line. I don't need any of this. And you can see why if you have an extra large piece of tissue, it's just easier to work with because you're not worried about, you know, fitting it exactly onto your, um, your cardstock piece. So there is my horse done with the faux linen technique. Now it's ready to put on here. I could do it just like this. It's kind of cool looking just the way it is. But let me show you what just makes it pop that little bit extra. Get my markers out of the way. So these are the blends that I used. And I will have a PDF tutorial for this on my blog for you. Um, I used to try to get it up here on the same day. Yeah, that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> my best efforts is to get it up there by tomorrow. So we shall see. But I will have the PDF tutorial that will give you all of the measurements and everything and all of the the step-by-step -step instructions as well. Ooh, that is coming up. That is not good. Okay, let me grab a little bit extra. See, this is what happens when you don't get enough glue on there. <laughs> so let's do a little repair here. Let me get a little bit more glue here. And it's a pretty easy fix. You don't want that coming off like that. So let me just grab this and pop a little bit underneath there. There we go. Okay. And then I need to get that off of there. Okay. So now I have my faux linen um, piece. And I'm going to actually now add a little bit of crumb cake ink. 
and I don't want to use my gluey sponge. I actually have a sponge here. Where'd it go? Here we go. So I'm going to take this, and what's going to happen with this is it's going to age it. And you see how that's just going to give it that really nice kind of aged look? And I think it almost ends up looking like leather. And you can do as much or little of that as you like, but look at the difference now. And that's the other reason I think that you don't really need the blue on here, the blue sky. I think it just, you can add a little bit more even to the front to just give it that really aged look. And I think that is very handsome now. Hey, Yvonne, I'm glad you're here. So this is faux lemon. And you can see how quickly that comes together, but it gives you a really different look. A lot of texture there, a lot of interest. So what I'm gonna do is before I mount this, I'm going to stamp on my piece of designer paper. Now what I discovered in doing this project is that although I'm just using black ink and I'm using this little go for it, because I'm stamping on the designer paper, it's like there's a little bit of a coating on here and it doesn't really grab the ink and deliver it the way I want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up on my stamp apparatus. That is going to allow me to stamp it a couple of times and really lay down the black ink so that I get not a pale go for it, but <laughs> go for it needs to be strong. Strong word, I need it to really be strong on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this over here because I'm gonna put my word right down here and I find it easier to do that if it's if my piece of paper is a little farther, not quite to the edge of my stamp apparatus. Okay, so there is my stamp and I'm just using my black memento pad and I'm just gonna ink it up like so and stamp once. And then I'm gonna see how it's a little bit, it doesn't really look black. It looks almost like a pale brown. And I just need a little bit more definition to my words. So by doing it a couple of times, you see how much darker it is? And I'm even gonna go one more time. One more time. And that's where, you know, it just takes a couple of seconds to do that on Stamparatus. But look how nice and bold that is. And you can see that when I did it the first time, I didn't do that. And you see how pale it is compared to this? I wanted that really strong color. Um, I just think that looks a lot better. So, you know, you live and learn when you do these things. Okay, stamp apparatus. Let's put this over here. So you can see that this really comes together very quickly. This doesn't take a long time. For one thing, um, the coloring goes very quickly on this. Let me grab my, I'm gonna put my linen ribbon right across here. And to do that, let me use, I've got some, haha, this is what I want right here. I have some mini, we call these mini glue dots from a paper pumpkin kit. These are perfect for doing that. You guys love these from Paper Pumpkin. They're nice and flat, easy to transport. Although, I do like my roll because then I don't have to peel off that little bit. And I'm a lazy stamper, so. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my end and put it there, wrap it all the way around, and then fix that down there. So now that's gonna lay nice and flat for me. This, I'm gonna just get that little, Looks like my paper trimmer didn't cut that all the way. So now I'm ready to put that on my card base. And this again is um, terracotta tile, which is a really, really warm, deep orange. And this is just gonna go flat on here. So let me grab my snail. I'm excited about the new, you know, we have a new adhesive coming out with the new catalog. 
I'm excited. I've been using snail ever since I first started stamping. So having something new is going to be, I'm, I'm ready. I love my snail. But I'm thinking that if they would change something like snail, that's such a basic of what we use, and it's been around so long, that is probably an improvement. And that's, you know, the way that things go. When you've used something for a long time, you know, there are people in the industry that keep innovating and keep making things better. So that is ready to go right there. And I'm just going to use a couple of dimensionals on the back. Might need to grab a few more. I think this is going to not be enough. So let's put these on here. Here we go. Let me grab a few more. It's a pretty good sized piece. I think it's about. This looks like it's about four by two and three quarters or so. Let me get one more. So this way, my horse will stand right above here. Cynthia, I'm glad you like the technique. It's actually really, um, really cool. I think um, it, it gives, linen is such a classic fabric and um, it gives that classic look it can look very vintagey, but doesn't have to. Um, and I think here, where I've added the extra um, ink, it almost looks a little bit like leather. So let's do that. So it's not quite centered, which I kind of like. So my horse is definitely moving to this way. And then what I did was I gonna add a few of, uh, these are the, um, these are the metallic pearls and they come in gold as well as silver. I'm using the gold here and I think that they almost have a look of like, you know, the brassware that you use with horses. So I like the gold on these cause it's a really soft gold. It's not, um, it's not like that super shiny gold. It's really kind of a soft gold, and I think that actually looks better with what I'm doing here. So that gives just a little bit of a little bit of pizzazz there. And then last but not least, you could just add a linen bow. What I did, and I think this is already sold out, this is the burlap ribbon that I have loved. And what I've loved doing with it more than anything is shredding it like this and um, making a bow out of it. This is three strands, so this is a triple bow. And you just, you know, when you're doing these double and triple bows, you'd use it just like you would a single bow. And that is to just make your loop, bring it around, and then bring that through. You just have to be careful that you get all three pieces through together. And then we just kind of manipulate the loops to make them look pretty and give this a little trim. These are probably not very good. Oh, I actually did pretty well there. And then, let's see, do I need this bow or do I not? Maybe I don't even need it. It seems like it's a little bit big. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I made it too big. Let's see. Bow or no bow? Needs a little something, I think. There's no bow. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit of a bow. I just need to bring it down a little bit. Make it a little bit smaller. It almost looks like a horse tail. So there. But I messed around with it and now it got too loose. You know, you don't want your bow where it's gonna come apart. So that I think is better. Doing a smaller bow was the key. Now somewhere here are my little mini glue dots. Let's see if I can locate them. Here we go. And I think what I'm gonna do, because that burlap is pretty um, thick, I'm gonna put two of these here. And then that is gonna go like that, and there we go. Go for it. Now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of very vanilla on the inside, like so, and 
let's just add, hey Terry Lynn, I'm glad you're here. Let's grab these trees and let's put them on the inside just to kind of carry things through a little bit. And I'm just gonna use the ink that I already have out, which is the basic, the tuxedo black. And get a block. And that is gonna be a nice little touch on the inside. Will that fit? No, let's get a bigger block. That will be a nice little touch on the inside. Hey, Pat, I'm glad you like my card. So with that being said, um, I think that you should add the stamp set to your collection. You can go to my online store, or if you're a demonstrator, you can go to your online store and you can get the stamp set before it is gone. It is only available till the end of, well, not the end of the month, I think till June the 2nd. The new catalog goes live on June the 3rd. So there, I'm gonna put my little trees like so. And now, when I open my card, I'll have that. What do you think? I think just to kind of keep it in keeping with it, to not keep it in keeping, <laughs> um, to kind of um, keep everything flowing, I'm going to add a little bit of ink to my very vanilla. I'm so glad you like this card, Barb. It's so easy to do, you know? Um, these are just little touches and they don't take a long time. Um, you know, I was chatting with one of my one of my team members earlier who described herself as a fussy stamper, and I said, that's good. You know, we're all different, and we have different ways that we like to stamp. And I'm not a fussy stamper, largely because I'm too impatient, and I have a short attention span. So I need things that come together quickly and easily, but I like... Um, I don't want I don't want it to ever look like it was slapped together or there wasn't a lot of care taken when I when I do my stamping. So this gives just that little bit of something extra just by sponging that it kind of gives it that aged look and kind of coordinates with that part right there um, with my faux linen. So this is the faux linen technique and the Let It Ride stamp set. And um, just to show you here again, this is the same technique done with a floral print. So you can see how it just, you know, it lends itself to different, this is just stamped with regular ink. This is done with blend. So you can see the vibrancy of the color coming through on the tissue much more with the blends. And this is done, um, I mean, I used crumb cake, which is really light in color. Um, so just different looks, but the same technique. And again, I will have the PDF tutorial for you tomorrow on my blog at sweetstamper.com. So be sure to head over there. And um, I hope that you will consider, if you are not already a demonstrator, I hope that you will consider um, joining my team. I had my little flyer right in front of me. Yay, yay. Well... I have my little, oh, here it is. So we are, my team, we're gonna be making this fun little project next week. And this is the starter kit special that starts on June the 3rd, runs all the way through the 30th. So it's a great way to get a free bundle and also get $25 free um, plus free shipping. So I wanna encourage you to join my Southern Sweet Stampers team. They're amazing. We are in many plans right now for a stamp camp next month. And um, I'm gonna be utilizing a lot of them, showcasing their many talents. And, um, you know, we have people on our team that don't ever do classes. And they just enjoy their discount, they're happy shoppers. And then we have people on our team who are doing classes a lot. We have people on our team who, um, do classes for senior centers, and that's all they do. They like to do, they like to um, help the elderly to make cards and just have fun with that. Um, so yeah, you don't have to ever hold a class. You don't ever have to take an order from somebody. If you wanna do those things, I can help you build a really thriving business that can 
um, help you pay your bills and do all kinds of things, or maybe just craft for free. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, having somebody else pay for your craft supplies is fun. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to approach um, being a demonstrator, but the probably the, the primary thing is you get a discount on your stamps and your supplies. So there's no obligation at all, and I hope with the kickoff of the new catalog that you would consider joining the Southern Sweet Stampers. We have a lot of fun. So that is it for today. I will have uh, the free PDF tutorial on my blog tomorrow, and that is sweetstamper.com. Thank you so much for being here today, and take care. I will see you Thursday. Um, I will post a reminder, but I will be here Thursday at 2 o'clock. So take care, and God bless.